Let me ask you a question. What would it take for you to believe in God? Maybe you've been asked this question before, and you have a very clear answer in mind. It could be that, like many people, you are not sure. What would you need to see in order to believe in God? Would you need to see a picture of God? Would you need to hear God talking to you? Would it be enough to show that the Bible really does contain predictive prophecy that proves some sort of spiritual being helped the writers? I don't know where you are with this, but let me propose that we take a scientific approach to our study of God. Now, what do I mean when I say a scientific approach to the study of God? After all, you've probably heard that the idea of God can't be tested or verified using science. It is true that some modern definitions of science would make it impossible to test God scientifically. You know, for instance, one statement written by a pair of scientists says, to be scientific in our era is to search for solely natural explanations. The idea is that if a person comes to any conclusion that includes something supernatural, such as God or a soul, then the process just can't be called scientific because science deals only with the natural or material world. The problem with this definition is twofold. First, it limits the discipline of science unnecessarily. And second, it's not how science has been done for the past several hundred years. Scientists such as Louis Pasteur, Isaac Newton, James Clerk Maxwell, they were all believers in God as well as distinguished scientists. Their concept of science was slightly but profoundly different from the one we just heard. They believed science to be the search for accurate and credible explanations. They didn't limit their thinking to solely natural explanations. When and if a better explanation might be available. Imagine how using a limited definition could get a scientist in trouble. Suppose we find an apple in a person's backyard. And the apple has a large chunk removed from the side, and a forensic scientist is commissioned to explain what caused the missing piece of the apple. And she's told she can arrive at any explanation, as long as she does not say that a human was involved. As she inspects the apple, she sees a distinct tooth pattern, she examines the dental records of the owner, and the owner's dental patterns match the bite out of the apple perfect, the owner of the yard where she found the apple. She then takes a sample of a trace liquid from the apple, and it proves to be saliva. The DNA in the saliva matches the DNA on file for the owner of the yard. You understand her problem. She seems to have a very good explanation, but it involves a human which was the limiting factor to her work. And so she then rejects that explanation and begins to search for non-human explanations. She compares the marks to rocks or sticks near the apple. She looks for prints left by animals that may have bitten or removed the chunk. She looks for other saliva remains that might have been an animal with animal DNA. And she considers possibilities about how the DNA sample she has that seems to be human could have been contaminated. Well, none of the non-human explanations have the explanatory power of the idea that the person who owns the house took a bite out of the apple. But the non-human clause in her work forces her to accept an inferior explanation. Of course, all illustrations break down at some point, and they're not perfect, but we can see that approaching the study of the universe with the limited definition that science deals only with natural explanations that could cause us to miss out on other very good explanations that truly account for the things we see in our world. Several years ago, a popular atheistic writer named Leah Labresco, she left atheism and became a believer in God. In an interview with a CNN news reporter, she was asked how she came to the conclusion that God exists. And she stated, Kind of the same thing any scientific theory has, almost, that it had more explanatory power to explain something I was really sure of. Notice that she's using the same definition of science that men such as Pasteur and Newton used. Not one limited to solely natural explanation, but one that simply says that science is the pursuit of the best explanation. 
whatever that may be. When we approach the concept of science in this way, it opens the door to see the scientific evidence that points to a Creator.